Hi, this is Rocky Athos, and you're watching the Guitar Mania Channel. Rocky, uh, yes. great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to Vienna. And um, I understand you've just started touring, uh, started with the European leg of the tour. Yeah, we've got a, a, almost 53 shows, I think it is. Maybe 54 and uh, 56. So we got a lot of shows. Wow. <laughs> uh, and how has been the reactions from the audience so far? Oh, it's been awesome. People have been great. We've had a terrific time and we've, we're just having them very fun, very much fun. Uh -huh. uh, you've been playing with John Mayall for the past six years. If yeah, I understand we're working correctly. on our sixth year together. I've done uh, the uh, Tough album with John, then we've got a live album that's mm -hmm. a double album called Live in London, and we also have that video that goes with that live video, Live in London. And then now, <clears throat> now we have this new record out, A Special Life, and uh, we're enjoying every bit of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also understand you have got a, a, a new solo record. Yes. By uh, the title of? Yes, uh, Let My Guitar Do the Talking. It's an instrumental album, and John was kind enough to come and do a guest spot on the, the album, so he sounds, sounds great. And uh, also I had another guest, J Smoking Joe Quebec. I, I'm not sure if you know him, but mm -hmm. he's a very good friend of mine, and he did a track with me also. And I have a new, another new album coming out in about three months. What actually happened is I had more material than I needed on this album, so <laughs> instead of doing a double album and making people pay so much, I decided to do the first release as all instrumental. Mm -hmm. And the second part of the album is it got all the vocals on it with singing and all that. So mm -hmm. then that way I had, instead of having 18 songs, <laughs> you know, I was able to split it into two products. So we have another one coming in about two months. You're a very busy man, uh, doing stuff with John and then your own stuff. Yeah. And uh, Can you talk about uh, how you really ended up playing for John Mayall? I mean, he, you, you are immortal already because, I mean, you're in the <laughs> tradition of so famous uh, yeah. artists like Eric Clapton and, 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 and all the others. I mean... Uh, yeah, well, it was, a, it was real interesting because... Uh, uh, <clears throat> John, I had got to open up for John in Dallas, Texas, and uh, we just basically said hello. There was nothing said one way or the other, you know, about, hey, you want to be my guitar player, or, or nothing like that. And uh, <laughs> it was four years later, I was driving down the freeway, and the phone rang, and I looked at the phone, and it said, Unavailable. I went, Usually I don't answer those calls. I didn't know who it was. So I went, hello. And uh, he goes, hello, Rocky. This is John Mayall. And I thought it was a friend of mine messing with me, just picking on me. I said, oh, be quiet, Brian. <laughs> and he, he goes, John goes, excuse me. And I went, oh, hello. He goes, yes, this is John Mayall. I went, oh, hello. <laughs> and he called and he asked me right on the spot. Uh, would I be interested in coming and touring and doing some albums with him and having some fun? Uh -huh. and I said, absolutely. Because you know, I love John Mayall. Right. I mean, I, we used to do several of his songs when we were younger. You yeah. know, so he was quite the inspiration. I was very honored when he called. It was awesome. Yeah. And did you, do ha did you have to, do, to prepare a lot uh, for, for, for his songs? And... Uh, well, how did you prepare? Or did you prepare at all? I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you what he did. He sent me a song list about this long <laughs> and said, learn them. So uh, I learned them. And we didn't do them all, but I got familiar with everything that John was 
doing. And mm. So yeah. How did you go about? Uh, of course, you 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 coming in with f the big footsteps of these all these legends. Yeah. I mean, how how did you approach what they played on the records and live? Did you interpret or did you play? Try to play note by note, or how was your? No, product? I wouldn't want to do that. I would, uh, and John said it best. He just said, "Play your style." You know, we're going to do those, some of those songs, mm -hmm. but just play your style and put your signature on it, which is what I had planned to do anyway. Because it's the only style I know. It's me. So, uh, but he made me feel real comfortable to where you know. You, I don't think he would want you to copy somebody else. He just said, do your own thing. Let us talk about your style, Rocky. Uh, how would you describe your style? Well, I would like to think that it's my own style, but uh, I would call it Texas blues with a, you know, a rock overtone, just like what John was. Because to me, John was always you know, rock and blues. That's why I loved him. Uh, actually, he, he's the one that brought blues to me when I was younger. Like, oh man, blues is cool, <laughs> you know? So I'd like to think that it falls in that category. Uh, and, and, uh, which records did you grow up listening to? Uh, the, besides John Mayall's records? Mainly Cream, um, the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, you know, people that had some kind of root, maybe not the Beatles, but the Stones and, and uh, uh, obviously Cream, you know, they had that bluesy root. I love the animals, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So when John, when I discovered John, it was even more up my alley, so it was, right, it was right. cool. Uh, let us briefly talk about the equipment that you're using uh, on the current tour. Well, okay. Uh, what guitars are you playing? Well, I've got a 59 uh, historic VOS Les Paul. And uh, <clears throat> on the record, I used an, an original 1960 Fender Stratocaster. Mm -hmm. On tour, I brought a 1982 uh, white American reissue. It's a lovely guitar, mm. uh, but that's what I've got with me right now. Okay, and in terms of amps? I'm using the uh, Red Knob Fender Twin. Uh -huh. uh, they're actually kind of hard to find. Fender quit making them a while back, but I have found that that's a dependable amp. So basically, that's your amp that's standing up there on the stage, well, or did you rent that's, one? That's rented, but uh -huh. everywhere we go, that's what we rent. Mm. Okay, we've, we can start with the guitars. I've got a 1962 American reissue from 1983 and uh, this one here is kind of my favorite road warrior it's a 1959 VOS Gibson historic super guitar these are I think a lot of people call them the evil twin and uh, we call them the red knob they're kind of discontinued but Claude Taylor is the one that turned me on to him because he said Mick Taylor loved him and I said well Mick gets a pretty good tone. <laughs> How do you set it up? Well Claude sets it up just like this and that's pretty much in every room and Claude is the one that dials it in and then from there we uh, I may tweak it a little bit and add more high or low you know whatever so I use a TS9 and a TS10 and uh, usually I use them like this, from left to right. This is a cleaner overdrive, and this one is obviously just a little bit smoother. But I had mine specially uh, rewired, so they're not stock at all. I had a good friend of mine, John Goodman, from, uh, <clears throat> from uh, Fort Worth, Texas, rewired these with all kinds of different capacitors, that, you know, that computer talk I don't know much about. <laughs> But anyway, even a stock one does the same idea. I just think that the way he's got them, it's a lot smoother. So that's pretty much it. I keep it a real simple rig. What would you say for young players that want to, to get into blues music or guitar playing? Uh, what, what, what would you recommend? How should they start or what should they focus on? I just think that they should focus on not trying to copy anyone. Mm -hmm and just develop their own style 
which would be their own expression. I just think that would be the best advice. Uh -huh. Uh, going back to touring with John Mayall, has there been any, any very memorable experience that you had with him? Or what was the most memorable experience that you had with John on, on stage? On stage? Or in general, I mean. Yeah. Well, being a guest with Jeff Beck was awfully cool. You know, uh, when we were in Australia, uh, Jeff Beck invited us all out <clears throat> to watch the show. and. Me and, and, and John and Greg and Jay all got to go and, and sit with Jeff and have a nice conversation. I thought that was really a lot of fun. I mean, Jeff Beck is just... Uh, oh, yeah, he's only awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool guy. Awesome. Look, thank you so much, Rocky. Oh, yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. All the best for the remainder of the tour. Well, thank you.